Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you the auto reset or uh, auto program circuit I came up with for the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. So what's the point of this? Well, if you've ever worked with this module in a bare bones kind of way, like on a breakout board like this, then you hook up your USB to serial converter. And when you want to load your code onto the module, you have to do what I call the dance of the buttons. So on this one, we've got uh, GPIO zero and reset, and you have to set these in a certain way to put it into programming mode. Now, that's all fine and everything. In fact, my first version of the trig board uh, sort of did the same thing with buttons on it. And when you're developing code all day long, you're uploading hundreds of times. Uh, messing around with the buttons every time you want to upload code can get old fast. So on the newest version of the trig board now, all you got to do is make sure it's awake and then you hook your USB to serial converter up to it, press upload from the IDE, and then the code automatically starts loading onto the board. And that is due to the uh, auto reset circuit that I've added into this. So if we go over here to the IDE, I just pressed upload and there it is uploading the code automatically. And then also, of course, the serial monitor window it still works fine. does not put it back into programming mode or anything like that. And the circuit has no effect on any of the other functionality on the board, including all the low power, super low power functionality, meaning that it can still sleep at less than one microamp. So now let's, uh, let's dig into this design a little bit. And I'm sure most of you are thinking, why not just use the same thing that was done on the Node MCU? So I've, I've just pulled the schematic up here and I just want to quickly show you that. So they've got a direct USB connection into the board, so no need for the USB to serial converter. They've included the IC for this right on the board. And they did that because now they have access to both DTR and RTS lines which as you can see feed into this transistor circuit to toggle the reset and GPIO zero lines. And uh, that works because you need to toggle both of those lines to put it into programming mode. Now on the trig board though, I was very limited on space. So I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to fit all of this on there. And also I know this can be, you can get these parts for really cheap, but um, when you see my circuit, let, let's pull that up real quick. So right here is all that I added. So just a simple transistor diode and a handful of passives. So that is, and of course you have the header. So that is uh, a lot cheaper than all of those uh, components there. Plus, I've worked with the Node MCU in the past, and even this circuit I've had problems with and, and reliability issues with. So, so far so good with this one, and I have uploaded the code uh, probably hundreds of times and haven't had any issues. So um, I've got the Saylee hooked up to it, and now we're going to kind of get into the nuts and bolts uh, of how this whole thing works. Not really sure how I'm going to uh, run this video yet, but we'll just kind of take it step by step here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is hook up the USB to serial converter. I've got the Saylee hooked up, and um, I'm going to pull the schematic up here and show you first where that USB to serial converter plugs in. So we've got the six pin header over here, which is uh, follows a standard FTDI pinout. We're only using ground RX, TX, and DTR. Obviously we're at a 3.3 volt logic level. And I know we probably could have done something clever with the spare pins here, or uh, possibly, you know, one of the things we could have done was just simply add like a programming jumper or something like that. But really, again, I wanted it to keep it as simple as possible without the user having to really do anything other than making sure that the board was awake. So we've got those pins coming in, which again, we only have DTR here, or this could be RTS as well, it really doesn't matter, and I've, I have tested it with both. But we only have access to one line that can be used to basically put it into programming mode. So that pin there, comes over here to this circuit, this is the new circuit here, and it comes into the circuit right here, and then our outputs are the reset and GPIO zero lines to the module. So I'm going to kind of do a little side-by-side -side thing here with the Saylee. Okay, so I have the uh, Saylee hooked up here, and uh, we've, we've got it side-by-side -side there with the circuit so you can see everything. And all of the nets in the circuit are monitored by the Saylee, so reset, GPIO zero, 
uh, and then the uh, the transistor Q3, the base and collector, the 3.3 volt line, and the DTR RTS feeding the whole circuit. So just to kind of explain what we're trying to do here, the idea is that we want the DTR line because it's normal behavior when you click upload from the U the USB to serial converter will pull that line low. You get this low pulse. So that's the only thing we can work with. And we want to pull the reset line low and then when it when we let go of it, the GPIO zero line must be low. And that's when it checks to see if, you know, if GPIO zero is high or low. And if it's low, it's going to go into programming mode. If it's high, it will just go into normal operation. So that's what we're trying to do here with this circuit. So right here you can see this is a capture from a normal upload. Pulls DTR low. Reset gets pulled low through C1. And then it pulls down on the base of Q3. So we look here at the base of Q3, pulls it low. We get a little bit of an RC discharge there through the 100 ohm resistor, which is what we want. I didn't want to just, uh, I didn't want to just pull everything from this 10 microfarad capacitor in through D2 into the DTR line. So I current limit it a little bit with this 100 ohm resistor, pulls that low. Now we've got the base pulling low, which sets up the voltage at GPIO 0. We have current through Q3, and we pull GPIO 0 low as well. You can see it kind of tracks with the base of Q3. And then D2 here is important because, look, right here when DTR, we let go of DTR, it pulls up high right here, it's not going to backfeed the base of Q3. It can't because D2 only will allow current flowing in that direction so it can only pull it low it can't drive it back high so it'll only charge back up through this 10k here to 3.3 3.3 volts there and that's what happens so right at this point right here at the base of q3 we're just looking here this is the let go point and then you can actually see the voltage starts charging back up and then right here is when it finally boots up and then gpio zero takes over and you know what, what it's actually doing in the code and stuff um, so anyway, yeah, so we get the base of Q3, we let go right here, it charges back up, but it's still low, and that's the nice thing about this, is that we've got a slow, uh, RC right here with the 10K and 10 mic there on the base of Q3, so what it's going to do is keep Q3 conducting, and that's what it does, so it keeps the GPIO zero line low when it, the reset line goes back high. So that's how that works, and it works great. Now, this is a normal upload, and that's what I mean by that is this, there's many states to this system to consider. The next one is, is what happens on a, on a boot up, because the trig board platform, sort of the special sauce here is its low power capabilities, and it actually kills power to the whole system and sleeps. And then when you wake it up from a door switch or the timer wake, it's actually going to apply the 3.3 volts to the system, and I don't want that boot up to put it into programming mode. And uh, let's look at that next. All right, and then here's what it looks like when the trig board uh, wakes up from its deep sleep state. You see the 3.3 volts is applied there. And this was actually really hard to get right. I spent a lot of time tweaking the design and the values in here just right so that when it would boot up, it would not automatically go into reset mode. And also make sure it was extremely reliable too because it was funny. Like I would get it so that from the Arduino IDE, I was able to upload the code. Great. Everything works great. you know. And then I put it into a deep sleep state, wake it up, and it would wake up and go straight to programming mode. Or it wouldn't, and then on like the 10th time, it would go into programming mode. So that was just driving me crazy. And uh, here's what that looks like, though. So you can see that the reset line starts coming up. And the key here is that the GPIO zero line tracks with the reset line so that it's not low when, the, when it comes out of reset. It is at the same level. And in the design here, you can see a couple things I was trying to do. So C3, uh, the idea there was to keep the collector of Q3 high uh, or at least high during that initial boot up because this is this cap here is going to look like a dead short to 3.3 volts, which is what's driving the reset line. It's the pull up to that 3.3 volts. 
So that was the idea there. But also what I what I ended up doing here was using a PNP uh, transistor. Originally I had uh, MOSFETs in here and they were too fast. And also I couldn't really get the, the kind of, uh, I don't know what the word would be, the sloshiness kind of effect I was trying to get with this circuit. With the transistors and their super low uh, VGS thresholds, it was way too snappy and digital-like. But with the PNP, I could really get some sloshiness in the circuit. That's what I'm calling it, the technical term. And that is what allows this to work. So, so that's how that is. We keep the, the, uh, the GPIO0 tracking with reset. And then finally, there was another scenario here that was driving me crazy, which was after you upload your sketch, you open the serial monitor window, and then, oops, goes into programming mode. So that was extremely annoying. And at first, I'm like, ah, oh, we'll just live with it. Because what you could do is before you click the, the serial monitor icon, you could just upload the USB to serial converter, you know, so that the board is running its code, and then open the serial monitor window, and then plug it back in, and then hope it doesn't reset it. And uh, I actually did have a version of that working on the bench, but thinking, man, there's got to be a better way. So let me actually run that now and show you how that works. Okay, and I've got that trigger now set up on the falling edge of the DTR line so that when we open the serial monitor window, we do get a reset pulse. And you can see that it's sampling. And if we look at that now, you see that uh, we got the DTR pulse, but it's le it's like two milliseconds so it's nothing and we do have the serial monitor working so the board is running code it is not stuck in programming mode but if we look close at this um, you can see that when we get that low pulse on the DTR it does reset the processor but the GPIO zero line as it starts falling down we have that RC circuit in there so that it's not uh, low enough for it to think that it's a logic level low. So when it comes out of reset and it checks GPIO zero, it's not quite low enough for it to consider it a low level. So you can see it's kind of a science project of, of values there to get all of this to work properly. And again, that's why I put a lot of time into this. Uh, so we've got the serial monitor working. It can boot up fine. It can upload code fine. Everything works perfectly, and the circuit is just so simple. So, again, I think uh, I think it's a pretty cool way of doing it. Uh, and I'll have this schematic now posted up on the Trigboard page, and hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.